Hey, I'm Colin, and today we're going to talk about how to lay concrete interlocking paving stones over a permeable base construction. A family recently purchased this home, and the concrete garage, slab, and the driveway were both in terrible shape. They demoed both of the pieces of concrete and replaced the garage slab with concrete again, but they wanted to do paving stones for the driveway. Upon demoing the concrete in the driveway, there was an immense amount of pea gravel below. What we're going to do instead of removing all this pea gravel because it's below finished grade, is we're just going to stabilize it with a good compactor and build up a good rock footing to help with the longevity of this project. Because there is poor natural drainage for this project, we're going to be integrating a ribbon of permeable paving stones to help that excess water drain off quickly. So the first step for any paving stone installation process is to excavate. You're going to want to make sure that you always get a locate before you do that, especially when it's in the front of the house like this project, so you don't damage any utilities during excavation. We dug out about 13 inches below finished grade so that we could integrate three inches of crushed open rock in our project because of our pea gravel situation. Traditionally, you only need about six inches minimum. So you'd only have to dig out about nine. Make sure when you excavate, you don't over excavate. If you do, it's no big deal. You can always put gravel base back in that spot. And it's always good to have a good firm foundation to start from. The second step to our project is going to be our gravel base construction. So what we're going to do first is compact all of our subgrade. There's a little portion left that still has some dirt exposed and it's a little wet so it's mud. So what we're going to do is we're going to take about a little skim layer of one inch crushed open rock over that to help reduce the mud accumulating on the bottom of our plate compactor. When everything's compacted then we can lay our geo filter fabric which is going to reduce, the or reduce soil from migrating into our gravel base. We're gonna put three inch crushed open rock, make a nice layer to help stabilize our footing. From that, we're gonna build up about four inches of one inch crushed open and compact it. We can lay some geo triaxial grid on there, which is gonna just help stabilize our gravel for longevity. Then we're gonna build up the remaining four inches of gravel with a total of about 11 inches. Uh, and then once we're good and flat, we can just start laying our bedding layer. For this particular project, we wanted to utilize the three inch crushed open rock to help stabilize our footing as much as possible. Because especially we had that pea gravel there, uh, we just wanted some bigger rock to help start out with. For this particular project, it was fairly easy for us to see that there was very minimal slope. Therefore, we were very confident that we could do most of the gravel base by eye. We didn't implement the string lines until we were almost done, just to make sure everything was perfectly flat. If you've never done a paving stone project where you had to do the gravel base yourself, um, it may be useful to do the string lines from the beginning. When installing paving stones with the open graded base method, you have to use concrete as a form of edge restraint. Plastic doesn't work because the spikes do not hold well in that open graded aggregate. We're using Perma Edge, which is a very good form of edge restraint with concrete, but when you do a driveway, you have to implement it with about two feet of either biaxial or triaxial geogrid to help support that edge.
We've got our gravel base completely flat and compacted, so now we're ready to screed our bedding layer. What we're using for our bedding layer today, because we're using the open graded base concept, is what's called washed quarter 10. It's quarter inch crushed gravel that's clean. It's open so it can drain. There's a lot of benefits to installing this bedding layer, whether you're a contractor or a DIYer. One of them is that it can't get saturated in the rain like traditional concrete sand, and it also can't get baked dry in the sun like traditional concrete sand. So it's gonna be able to be much more rigid. You can also walk on it if you need to, just to grab a tool or something like that. And as long as you're tedious, you won't leave a big impression like you would in traditional concrete sand. You're gonna screed it just like concrete sand, something one inch and outside diameter, like our metal screed rails we have here. You're just gonna push it along with the board. We've got our bedding layer screeded out. There's a couple channels from the screed rails that we'll have to fill as we go. Um, it's really just the same order of operations as you would with uh, concrete sand. We're gonna be utilizing the quick, click and drop method as much as possible. So whenever you're butting stones up against each other, make sure you slide them into a corner, pop them down. You wanna set these down into your bedding material and then try and tuck them up against each other. As you can see, we've got this ribbon around our edge of permeable paving stones. That's the permeable Holland pewter. We're just in implementing that for extra drainage solutions. Uh, the majority of the field is going to be our standard parking plaza in the Cambridge blend and the classic mustard K pattern. Uh, one thing we've also noticed about quarter 10 that's pretty cool is when you have to adjust stones to keep square and straight, uh, when you slide them, they're less likely to get uh, that bedding material up in between the joints and make wider joints throughout your project. So when you're laying border stone around your field of pavers and you start from one end and you work towards the other, sometimes you'll be left with some gaps. If there's a gap that's typically less than an inch and you have lots of length of border, you can also gap those out a little bit to make some slightly larger than uniform joint lines for your sand and they'll be pretty well hidden. We don't wanna put any sliver cuts in these gaps because it would be a small piece and it's not as strong. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take two full pieces, cut them slightly larger than half to help make up that difference and make it look like just a slightly longer full piece of stone to be as strong as possible. With our field completely laid and our border all cut in nice, we can start installing our edge restraint. The type of edge restraint we're using is perma-edge. We like perma-edge over other concrete edge restraint because it's much more lower profile and it only has to be troweled about four inches wide. The finishing step of our project is that we're gonna to need to compact our stones. We like to utilize a roller attachment for our plate compactor. It does help make things move a little bit quicker and provide even compaction. It is not necessity for all types of paving stones, but you might wanna consult your manufacturer per your specific type of paving stone to see if it's recommended. 
Then we'll be sweeping in our field with some fine dry sweeping sand. It works great for most applications. Uh, but for our permeable ribbons around the borders of our project, we're gonna be utilizing Easy Joint, which is a resin sand that hardens similar to polymeric sand, but is still permeable. We've successfully completed this paving stone project. We've gone over the key points to installing paving stones over an open graded base construction. We also helped the homeowners out by finding a solution for their poor drainage by integrating a row of permeable paving stones around the outside of their project and through the middle. If you wanna learn more about how to install paving stones, check out DIYWithWI.com or subscribe here to our YouTube channel to keep in touch.